In this tutorial I'm going to show how to get OxDNA up and running on Windows by using the Linux subsystem. So this is a, a first part in a series of tutorials to show you how to set up simple DNA systems for simulation in OxDNA using vHelix. And running OxDNA in Windows isn't the most efficient way and for large simulations you're probably going to need some type of Linux computer with a, a graphics card or some type of cluster but this is a good way to get started with OxDNA simulation and get a feeling for how it works so OxDNA compiles best on Linux and but if you have a Windows computer there is a way to get Linux running inside your Windows computing with, with what's called the Windows subsystem for Linux and uh, and I will show you how to activate it here and the first thing you need to do is to activate the Windows subsystem so on my computer it's already done but if it's not done you're gonna have to do it like this you're gonna have to open what's called PowerShell so I, I hit the window key and then I just type PowerShell Windows PowerShell and unfortunately my computer is in Swedish but I right click it and hit run as administrator yeah. and then I get it started and then I need to paste in this line from from Microsoft's website to enable the PowerShell so I copy it and I paste it into PowerShell so I, I right click I paste by right clicking in this case and then I hit enter and then it does something and in my case uh, with the Windows subsystem for Linux is already enabled so I don't have to do anything uh, but you may need to restart your computer if this hasn't been done and after this I'm gonna download a Windows dist a Linux distribution to run inside the Windows and I do this with the Microsoft Store so I hit the Windows key again and I go to Microsoft Store and I will install Ubuntu which uh, works well for me so I just search for Ubuntu and up comes the different versions and the, the one I'm going to use here is Ubuntu 18 long term stable which has worked well for this and my internet is a bit slow unfortunately so this might be faster on your computer and I just hit install to install it okay now the Installation is incomplete on my computer, which took a little while because my internet is not great. And unfortunately it's in Swedish, but I just hit start to start the Ubuntu. And what happens is it needs to install itself a little bit further, which will take a few minutes as it says here. All right, now the installation is complete. And the first thing we need to do is to enter a username and password for your Linux subsystem. So here you can enter whatever you want and just remember what you entered. So for username, I'll put Eric. And as for password, I put something secret. And so important if you're not familiar in Linux, it doesn't print out the characters when you're inputting a password. So it is entered. Okay, and then enter the password again. Okay, great. Now we have Linux running inside Windows uh, and now we need to update this uh, Linux installation and download some tools that we'll be able that we will need to um, uh, to later install OxDNA. So I just made a little sheet sheet here with what we need to enter. So first we need to type in sudo apt dash get space update. And then you have to enter the sudo password that you typed in previously. And now it's going to download a bunch of packages, or, uh, or rather update the packages inside, uh, so that we can download the latest things. All right, now we can do the next one, which is sudo apt get upgrade. And then it asks you, do you want to do it? And you hit yes. Y for yes. And then it downloads some more things. All right, now that's done. Now we are going to start 
downloading and installing the tools that we will we'll need to compile OxDNA. Uh, so first we will download the essential build tools. So it's sudo apt-get install build-essential. And then it will ask you yes or no. You say yes. And then we will download some files and install them inside Ubuntu. All right, now the uh, essential build tools are installed. And then we are going to have to install one final thing, and that is CMake. So then we type in sudo apt-get install CMake. And then we hit yes again to approve the installation of this package. OK, great. Now we can move on to installing OxDNA itself. So, so first we need to download OxDNA, and we do that from the okay uh, from the OxDNA website. So it's dna.physics.ox.ac.uk, and here we can find a site called Download and Installation. And a bit further down, it says that you can download this latest stable source package from here, and this takes you to the OxDNA source forge page. And from here, I downloaded the OxDNA 2.4 package. So it's a compressed archive. And what I did is I, I, install, I downloaded it and I moved it to my documents. Or to, to documents. Uh, like this. And now I'm going to show you how to navigate inside the Linux subsystem to this folder in order to install, compile OxDNA. So if we bring up the Linux subsystem again, and my little sh sheet sheet. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to move to the documents. And documents are on the C drive, but inside the Linux subsystem, the C drive is found inside uh, mount. So you have to type cd to change directory to, this is, this is my path to the documents in this case. So it's cd slash mnt slash c for the C drive slash users users slash ebens which is my username slash documents and then we hit enter and then we can move into the documents folder and now we need to uncompress the archive that we downloaded with oxygena so in linux we do that by typing tar space dash xv f in space and then the name of the directories that we want to uncompress. So in this case it's oxDNA and then we can hit tab to autocomplete the name of the file and then we just hit enter to uncompress the directory. Okay, it says that there were some errors here, but I, I think it's okay. We'll just have to see. Um, okay. So what we need to do now is to move into the OxDNA folder. So we do a CD OxDNA. This is the uncompressed archive. And then we have to make a directory that we call build. And then we have to move into the directory that we just made. So then it's cd build. And now we need to uh, start compiling it. So what we do is, I'm, I'm going to do sudo cmake. I'm not sure if we need to do sudo here, but I'm just going to do it to be sure. So it's sudo space cmake space dot dot. And now I didn't have to enter my password because I recently entered the, the sudo password. Okay, so now it says uh, configuration done. And what we can do is now to, to compile the code. And we do that by typing make space, in this case, J4. So this is to compile it with four threads, which is good for my laptop. And we hit enter. And now it starts 
uh, compiling OxDNA. You can see the sort of percentage printout here. All right, so that took a little while, but now OxDNA is successfully compiled on this computer. And we can look into the folder here using the windows and, and inside the folder we made build. There will be another folder called bin. And inside here is actually OxDNA that we can use to run our simulations. Okay, so just to test, just to test that our new compiled OxDNA works and to show you how to use it, I will use one of the test files that come along with the OxDNA installation. So if we move into OxDNA and then test uh, and then PolyA5 we will see a number of input files. So, so what we need is something called input and then the configuration and topology file for the si system that we are simulating. Um, and it is the input file that we feed into OxDNA. So what we do is uh, we move back from the build directory and then we can type ls to see where we are. And then we can see the test folder. So we do cd test and then cd poly a5. And now we're in the folder where our uh, test files are. So in order to start OxDNA, we need to, we will type sudo and then we will type the path to the OxDNA build file as we saw before. So that is slash mnt slash c slash, and this is uh, this is my path to, to where I compile OxDNA. So it might be different for you, or it probably will be different for you. And then build, bin, OxDNA, and then, so this is the path to the OxDNA software, and then we will give it the input file. So in this case, it's only called input, and then we will hit enter. And now we have to add the sudo password that we entered when we installed Ubuntu. No, okay. That's the simulation. That was a very, very, very short simulation. Uh, but it seemed to have run okay. End of simulation, everything went okay. Great. And then we get, we can check in our output file folders and see that we got some uh, some output of OxDNA. So this is a tiny, tiny system simulated for a very short time, but it seems to work at least, so that's great. Thank you for watching.